हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू इंटीग्रेटेड चाइल्ड केयर टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ईसीजी दिस इज बाय फार द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर ऑल मेडिकोज आई विल ट्राई टू मेक ईसीजी वेरी सिंपल इन ओनली टेन स्टेप ईसीजी इज अ ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एक्टिविटी गोइंग ऑन इन द हार्ट नो हाउ टू रीड एन ई इन जस्ट टेन स्टेप्स बिफोर दैट वी हैव टू चेक कैलिब्रेशन और स्पीड ऑफ द मशीन विच इज नॉर्मली सेट एट ट्वेंटी फाइव मिलीमीटर पर सेकेंड so we will discuss ecg interpretation in this manner first step is to check the rhythm we check rr interval as in this ecg rr interval are equal and there is p wave before every qrs complex so this is a normal sinus rhythm in this second ecg you can see rr interval are not equal and there is no identifiable p wave rhythm is irregularly irregular which occur most commonly in atrial fibrillation no look at this ecg normal regular rate with regular drop beat so rhythm is regularly irregular which is seen most commonly in second degree heart block type 2 second step is to calculate rate from ecg if rhythm is regular heart rate is calculated by 300 divided by large boxes between rr interval look in this ecg one small square is equal to 0.04 second and one big square is equal to 0.2 second so 5 large square is equal to 1 second this is a normal sinus rhythm ecg there are four large boxes between rr interval so if we divide 300 by 4 heart rate will come 75 beats per minute but if the rhythm is irregular as in atrial fibrillation rate is calculated by number of r waves in 6 second multiplied by 10 in this ecg strip there are 9 r waves so rate comes out to be 90 beats per minute third step is to calculate axis first of all normal cardiac axis is from minus 30 to plus 110 degree perpendicular leads are used most commonly to calculate the axis that are lead 1 and avf in this ecg net qrs complex in lead 1 and avf are positive if we plot these positive deflection on this diagram we will get vector in the normal cardiac axis range so this is a normal axis ecg and if net qrs is positive in lead 1 and negative in avf net vector will be in left axis deviation range if qrs is negative in lead 1 and positive in avf net vector will be in right axis deviation range no look at this ecg net qrs is positive in lead 1 and negative in avf this is showing left axis deviation you can remember it by mnemonic left leaves whereas in this ecg net qrs is negative in lead 1 and positive in avf this is right axis deviation and you can remember it by mnemonic right returns step 4 is p wave first of all see whether p wave is present or not if present see the morphology height of the normal p wave is less than 2.5 mm in limb leads and less than 1.5 mm in pericardial leads and width should be less than 0.12 second in this ecg you can see in lead 2 p waves are tall and peaked these are called p pulmonale which is seen in right atrial enlargement and if p waves are bifid and have notched in between it is called p mitral which is seen in left atrial enlargement step 5 is pr interval which is from the start of p wave to the start of q wave normally it is 0.12 0.2 second or 3 to 5 small square it is prolonged in av blocks and reduced in wpw syndrome pr interval is depressed in pericarditis step 6 is q wave it is called pathological if greater than 2 small square it usually indicate current or past mi as you can see deep q waves in inferior leads so this is ecg of old inferior wall mi step 7 is qrs complex normally it is 0.08 2.12 second or 2 to 3 small squares it is broad in ventricular arrhythmias which can be ventricular ectopic ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation or any pathology below bundle of his in right bundle branch block there is m pattern in v1 and w pattern in v6 you can remember it with mnemonic marrow where m pattern in v1 and w pattern in v6 
Similarly, you can remember in the ECG of left bundle branch block by mnemonic William, where W pattern in V1 and M pattern in V6. Step 8 is QT interval. It is from start of Q wave to the end of T wave. As rule of thumb, normal QT interval is less than half the proceedings RR interval. And abnormal prolonged QT interval is illustrated with increased risk of ventricular arrhythmias, especially torsate the points. Step 9 is ST segment. It is the flat isoelectric section of ECG between the end of S wave and the beginning of T wave. As in this ECG, you can see the ST elevation, which could be common due to acute myocardial infarction or in pericarditis. If ST elevation is present in V1, V2, it is septal wall MI. In V3, V4, interior wall MI. In 1 plus AVL, V5, V6, lateral wall MI. And if in lead 2, lead 3 and AVF, it is inferior wall MI. ST segment depression is seen in S tummy, myocardial ischemia and posterior wall MI. Now the last step is T wave. It is upright in all leads except AVR and V1. Tall, narrow and symmetrically peaked T wave are commonly seen in hyperkalemia. Broad, asymmetrically peaked or hyperacute T wave are seen in early stages of ST elevation MI. Inverted T wave are seen in myocardial ischemia and ventricular hypertrophy. In left ventricular hypertrophy, add deepest S wave in V1 or V2 if greater than 35 mm, it is left ventricular hypertrophy. Whereas in right ventricular hypertrophy, there will be right axis deviation, RS ratio greater than 1 in V1 and less than 1 in V5 or V6. R wave in V1 is greater than 7 mm. It indicates RVH. So this is all about the ECG.